What you are mainly looking at is amphipods, copepods, and seed shrimp. Amphipods are scuds. Copepods are sometimes called cyclops. Seed shrimp, ostracods, these would be myofauna. This is kind of a middle of the road between micro and macro fauna. This is sort of that in-between stage. This is kind of the next round of consumers after snails, shrimp. A little bit smaller, fantastic food source for small fish. Even bigger fish love to eat this kind of stuff. The long little missiles, those are scuds. The darting little jittery creatures, those are copepods. And sometimes you'll get a clear shot of a copepod with eggs. That's two little ovals hanging out its backside. If you look close on the bottom, you'll see little round dots moving around. Those are the seed shrimp. Sometimes you'll see them swimming around. They do not have that same jittery motion as the copepods. The scuds are also very smooth with their swimming. As I'm preparing cultures for sale, I have to collect up microfauna. I'm going to group these guys under the umbrella of microfauna, even though technically they may be larger than what would be classified as microfauna. Typically microfauna is much, much smaller. You can't actually see most of it with your naked eye. But I'm just going to call it all uh, microfauna. The debris is mostly digested seed pods and leaves. Now this came out of a fishless system. This was not just scraped off the bottom. This was mostly shaken out of seed pods. As uh, any one of these little creatures, plus many others, as they live in the seed pods, they're going to not only live in the seed pod, they're going to eat it. They're going to consume it. They're going to chew it up. This is their waste. And remember, waste is only really waste to the animal it comes out of. Even then, there's still nutrients within that waste that that creature could use. But we're going to call it waste from that creature. But it's only waste to that creature that produced it. And other creatures will chew that up again. So that seed pod has been reduced down to this kind of fine little... It's not quite powder fine, but smaller than most of the sand we're using. I wouldn't consider it to be waste or something I wouldn't want in the bottom of my aquarium. This would be like humic material, similar to leaf litter. Well, a lot of this is also chewed up leaves. Most of the debris here is going to be from the scuds, more so than the seed shrimp and copepods. Every microfauna culture I sell is looked at very closely and some of this material here in this cup would be divvied up or distributed into the cultures. I would include some of that debris in the bottom. That's where most of the action actually is. We can see three main creatures right here. Scuds, seed shrimp, and copepods. In this video, we're not going to get any closer than this. We're not going to take a, a deeper look into the substrate here with a microscope. We're not going that deep. I want to see what you can see with the naked eye. This is what you could observe yourself if you didn't have a microscope. It's practically mesmerizing. All this life 
all this movement that comes out of your aquarium. I wonder if your fish would like to eat some of that. I wonder if it really makes a difference if your fish is eating live food. Does it really matter? I wonder what your fish would really prefer. I know when they see one of these little creatures darting around, they cannot help but chase it down. You ever watch a betta chase after a scud? You ever watch a betta root around in a leaf litter looking for little creatures like this? Can you create the kind of habitat in your aquarium that promotes this kind of life and also sustains a fish population? Can you imagine how healthy little uh, fry would be, little baby fish, eating food like this? Can you imagine a dozen gallon jars full of this kind of life?